online shops like eBay or Amazon are both huge sources of data, allowing you to quickly compare products depending on their prices and on their features. In this video, you will learn how to scrape product data from eBay. If you want to reproduce the very same thing as what I'm going to do, you can download Octopus. It's a free web scraping tool and it's the one I use on a daily basis. The link to download it is always in the description. As an example, we will scrape digital cameras on eBay. So as you can see, we will scrape products from this part to the bottom of our page. And we've got a couple of pages to scrape. So if we want to create a new task in Autoburst, it's very simple because it's always the same thing. We copy our URL and on the home page, we paste our URL and we click on start. First of all, I want to remove this pop-up. And in order to do so, I'm going to turn on what we call the browse mode. When the browse mode is turned on, we can navigate as if we were using a normal browser. So let's take a look at the difference. When the browse mode is turned off, nothing happens. But when the browse mode is turned on, I can directly click on the decline all button. You only use the browse mode on two different scenarios for removing pop-ups and secondly, for scraping data behind the login. Another setting we can change is about the timeout. We can change the timeout from 20 seconds to 300 seconds. The higher the timeout, the more time you let the website to load entirely. So it will help to avoid missing data. If you want to know more about the timeout, you can check our tutorial in the description. Once we have changed all the settings, what should we do? There is a really cool button on Octopus. This is what I call the magical button. All we need to do is to click on the yellow button and auto detect web page data. Here we go. So let's take a look at what we have got. We've got the title, that's useful. We've got the URL, super useful as well. The image, we've got the number of reviews. I don't need that column. I'm going to delete it. The price, the shipping fee. What is that? I think it's the same URL, so I'm going to remove it as well. And this column, I don't need it either. This is perfect. We just need to uncheck add a page scroll. Why? Because you need to check this box only if you need to scroll down the page to have access to all the data. This is usually what you can see on every social medias. If you want to scrape social medias, you basically need to scroll down to the bottom of the page in order to load more content. But on eBay, we don't need that feature. So I uncheck add a page scroll and I click on create workflow. Our workflow is just great. I just need to select the pagination, the click to paginate button. And if I go to options, I will add a waiting time. So let's say around 10 seconds and I click on apply. I have been repeating it since the very beginning, but the waiting time is paramount on web scraping. Now you've got two options. If you are happy with your results, you can stop here because we've got the title, the URL, the image, the price and the shipping fees. But, and this will be the option two, if you want to scrape additional information, such as additional features, you should follow the following steps. We are going to click on the yellow button one more time. So, and click on links to scrape the linked page. Basically, we will click on each URL and then, and only then, we will scrape the description and additional data. I select title URL, which is related to this column. I click on confirm. As you can see, we've got this new step. And now we are on the detail page of the first element. I'm going to extract four 
additional pieces of data. The first thing I want to extract is the condition. So I click on it and I click on extract the text of the selected element. And I repeat the same process for each element I want to scrape. I want to scrape the condition, I want to scrape the brand, I also want to scrape the model, and I want to scrape the type. So this is the condition, this is the brand, this is the model, and this is the type. And once again, to make sure I will scrape my data in a safe way, I go to options and I add a waiting time, so let's say a random waiting time, that's even better. Wait, 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 slow down, just relax because this is not over yet. We need to be much more accurate than that. Okay, you're gonna ask, why do we need to be more accurate? I've got everything I need. So let me show you an example and you will get my meaning. I'm going to select two specific elements and let's take a look at the item specifics. Like this, like this. I want to scrape the condition first. The condition is the very first thing we can see, so not a problem. I want to scrape the type. The type is in the second level. But here, the type is here. Now you can get my meaning. The type for this specific product is located on the left, but for this product, it is located on the right. So, if we scrape this data like this, we will not get the same features. So, in order to improve our workflow, we are going to use XPaths. XPaths basically allow you to scrape data very, 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 very accurately. And do not worry, I've already prepared the XPath for you. We will put all of this in the description. The only thing I will show you is how this XPath work. So I've got my first XPath, but it all sounds really complicated. So I'm going to select the first part of my XPath and with a very useful Chrome extension, XPath Alper, I'm going to import this XPath and here is what we are going to select. All of these features. That makes sense so far. Now I'm going to add the second part of my XPath. Just like this, this is the second part. I copy and I paste it. As you can see, what we tell Octopus is that we want to scrape one of these characteristics with the word condition. That makes sense. Now we want to select what we call the parent. Then once again the parent, once again we want to select the parent. And as you can see each time it's a bit bigger. It's perfect. All we need to do is to select what is next to the condition. So this is what we call the following sibling. Following sibling, up, backslash, and we've got our result. All right, we copy and paste our XPaths. Just like this. Same thing for the brand. It is a very same structure. Click on apply. Same thing for the model and so on and so on. Your task is over. Please make sure your final workflow looks like this and you just need to save your task, then to run it. And you've got two options. You can run your task on your device, which is related to the free version of Autoverse, or you can run your task in the cloud, which is available with the freemium version of Octopus. What is the difference? With the freemium version of Octopus, you can run your task well, in the cloud with multiple servers. It means you can shut down Octopus, 
you can shut down your laptop and your task will still be running. Plus, running your task in the cloud is around 10 times faster than running your task on your device. So make your choice and run your task. Here we are. I've stopped my task because I've already have got like a bit more than 250 lines. Everything sounds okay. I just need to export data, remove duplicates, and export my file in an Excel spreadsheet. And I'll just let you taking a look at what the result should look like. Hope my video got your confusion cleared away. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos regarding Octopus and web scraping. We will always keep you updated.